In the history of Spain, there's one part of it that stands out as the hope for the people had at the time to form a better country, the Second Spanish Republic. From a start in 1931 to its end in 1939, this republic would leave passage to a very dark age, a period where one man stood in command. Spain had been in a dictatorship since 1923, but when Miguel Primo de Rivera gave up and went to France, a phase of transition known as La Dicta Blanda, where the general Belgur had power, started. In 1931, he gave power to Admirar Aznar, that called for elections. The elections of the 12th of April of 1939 were mainly divided in two. The conservatives that were mostly monarchists and the progressives that were calling for the Second Spanish Republic. In the rural parts of Spain, the votings were irregular, with dead people voting or people forced to vote for the monarchy. But in the cities, the Republicans won. In 41 of the 50 capitals of the provinces, but in the towns, the monarchy won. The night of the 13th of April, there was rumor that the king had left to France, but the king had not left and he gave the orders to stop the celebration, but the army didn't listen to him, and he actually left to France. The next morning at 6.30 in, in the morning, Eibar took out the Republican flag, beautiful flag to be honest, and a provisional government was formed, and directly new reforms were made, with Niketo Alca Zamora as the leader. He made it so the education budget was 50% higher, to open 5,000 schools every year to finally give the education to the people. The 28th of June 1931 was a very exciting day, because finally there were votings. The Spanish Socialist Workers' Parties won the election, In 1931, the constitution was written, giving free primary school and marriage and divorce was seen by the state. It separated the state and church, and the church stopped receiving money from the people, and the people had the right to protest. Of course, there was much more, but the important thing is paid vacation. At the same time, a very big change happened. The Liga Regionalista changed to being the Esquerra Republicana de Catalunya, the Left Republic of Catalonia. In 1931, Francesc Macià went out on the balcony and declared Catalonia an independent state. The Republic of Catalonia only lasted three days, but Spain promised that they would be able to lead their own territory. In 1932, José Sancurco tried to make a coup and very quickly failed, after a shooting in the capital. The leader of the coup got, first got sent to death, but then he was allowed to be exiled in Portugal. I find it a bit weird. In 1933, José Primo de Rivera, the son of the old dictator, created La Falange Española, inspired by the fascist party of Mussolini and the Nazi group in Germany. The same year, after a lot of pressure from the anarchists, the president, Manuel Azaña, quits and calls for early voting. The first voting in Spanish history where women could vote. In the voting, the right wing created a group called CEDA. They won the votings mostly because the women didn't work that much in the industry. And they were more influenced by the church that CEDA support more than the left wings. It was decided that they wouldn't be in power until 1934. When they eventually did come to power, they stopped all the reforms previously made by the left groups. The left group had been receiving many ideas from the Soviet Union and they got very radicalized. And, to stop the ongoing government of Seda, they organized a general strike in 1934. They, it failed very quickly, but the anarchists in Astoria still supported the revolution named the Revolution of October. In Catalonia, Luis Companys, the president of the Generalidad, gets arrested. The revolution ends, and it was represented mostly by a military called Francisco Franco. He arrested 30,000 people, hurt 3,000, and killed 1,500. In 1935, the president calls for re-election again. In these elections, even the anarchists were voting, the left parties got together and created the Popular Front that wins the election. 
But if you look at the voting, you can really see how divided the people of Spain were. Completely divided. After this, Spain is in chaos. The youth organization of the political groups get militarized and the youth of the Socialist Party, PSOE, join the communists and the people from Seda go to Falange, that was eventually banned by the government. In the next three months there will be 3,200 dead. They sent Franco and Emilio away so they wouldn't be able to do a coup. The conservatives had been thinking about doing a coup, but there were three main problems. The army wasn't going to unite them, they couldn't count on the president, and some people that wanted to do the, the coup were very violent. The 13th of July 1936, José Calvo was killed. He was a very important person in the right wing that had helped the old dictator to do his changes. He became very powerful. During his life, he kept trying to unite all the monarchies, but when the Republic started, he had to go to Lisboa and then France, where he became an extreme right member or even a fascist. He came back to Spain and tried to become president to reinstate the monarchy. He lost the votings by a lot. It had been the socialist guards that had gone to kill him. José Calvo was a very important right-wing monarchist. Obviously, the right-wing got very mad and at his funeral, a speech was said. <laughs> Imitar tu ejemplo, vengar tu muerte y salvar a España, que todo es uno y lo mismo. Porque salvar a España será vengar tu muerte. E imitar tu ejemplo será el camino más seguro para salvar a España. ¡Viva el corte! This death made the public of Spain explode. And four days later, the most horrible civil war Spain has ever seen started. A war where it ended up giving all the power to one man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.